So, you want to get rich by investing in cryptocurrencies. Nice. However, it's not as easy as it may seem just aping into the market any old random time, throwing all your money in, hoping for the best. Well, as a lot of people are finding out, potentially you are finding out, it's not quite that simple. A lot of people are expecting to get rich quick in crypto, but they end up getting broke quick in crypto. But getting rich by investing in cryptocurrencies, it is indeed possible. Lots of people are doing it. There are some time-tested strategies that simply work or at least give you a very high chance of succeeding in this market. So in this video, I'll be discussing how to get rich investing in crypto without getting lucky. My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if that's a topic that you would like to learn some more about, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, gently tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm, and of course, click on the notification bell to know when I put out a new video. So let's go ahead and just get straight into it. The first topic I would like to discuss is dollar cost averaging. This is when you buy a little bit of a coin every single week. Now, for most investors, this is the best way to get exposure to this asset class and to build a position long term. Time in the market is better than trying to time the market. And here's the proof of that. Now, if you had started buying $100 of Bitcoin every single week, so you get paid, you're taxing yourself, you got 100 bucks spare, you're going to throw it into Bitcoin. 100 bucks every Friday into Bitcoin. Starting from the 2017 peak price, you bought the freaking top in 2017 and you just kept putting $100 in every single week. Well, here's the interesting thing. If you had done that, including buying $100 of Bitcoin every week during the, the recent peaks at $50,000, $60,000, you would today have around $80,000 in profits. You would still be up $80,000 on your Bitcoin investment. That hundred bucks every week has turned out very, very well for you. This is the power of dollar cost averaging. Now, of course, buying the dips is great when you see something being really, really oversold. But if you don't have time to be watching the charts all the time, but you do believe in cryptocurrency as an asset class, you think that this is going to be the future of finance, which I believe that it is, then this is one of the easiest ways you can get involved. Now, you don't just have to buy Bitcoin, obviously. Let's say you're coming with 100 bucks every week and you're putting 50 bucks into Bitcoin, 25 bucks into Ethereum, and 25 bucks into Chainlink, just as an example. That's a simple way to do it too. You're building into these really fundamentally strong coins, taking the long-term view on these assets. This is one of the simplest strategies for simply doing well in the market over time. Trying to, to swing trade can leave you on the sidelines sometimes. Trying to chase every little move in the market can also leave you sidelined. This is one of the simplest ways you buy, you hold, you think long-term, continuing to build a position up over time. Now, the second thing that has really been coming into fruition and really taking off over the last year or so, yield farming. Also lending. Lending platforms have really started to take off uh, from sort of late 2019. The lending platforms really took off. The yield farming opportunities really took off in 2020. We have a lot of great options out there on the more established, safer platforms. Yeah, there are places where you can get yields for yield farming like 4, 5, 6, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 percent a year. But if you're in a 50,000 percent a year yield farm, you're also in an incredibly, incredibly risky situation the chance of losing all of the money that you put into that yield farm, pretty damn high. But you can actually check out other platforms uh, like Bancor if you can get into one of their stablecoin platforms. Uh, you can get 40 to 50% on stablecoins over on, on Bancor. So there's lots of great options out there. Bancor is also giving you some pretty decent rates on your Ethereum and on your Bitcoin. And look with the downturn in the market, the rates uh, you know, also are not quite as hot as they used to be. 
but there's a lot of great opportunities out there for you to put your crypto to work. This is the thing that I, I just got to keep hitting home. You're buying these assets, taking this long-term view. So you're buying your Bitcoin every single week and stacking it up for the long term. Now, we just talked about dollar cost averaging. Now, so if that person had taken that Bitcoin that they had bought over that time, they would have had around three Bitcoin, let's say. If they had taken that and put it to work in a lending platform, they could have been earning six, seven, eight percent, for example, a year on that Bitcoin. Think about that. That adds up a lot. So not only are you putting a hundred bucks in, but then the Bitcoin's also working for itself, making you more Bitcoin. That would have substantially added to that stack of Bitcoin over the last few years. This is a very, very powerful thing that if you're not taking advantage of it right now, you should definitely be exploring your options, checking it out and seeing what ways you can start earning on your crypto. So if you're holding that Bitcoin, you're holding that Ethereum, whatever else it might be, find out how to make it make more of itself. That way that money that you're investing into these assets can make more of itself. That brings us to talking about stable coins. Stable coins are something that I think not enough people are really using and you need to use them. You need to understand the value proposition of stable coins. The first, of course, is in yield farming. Some of the highest yield farms are not for Bitcoin and not for Ethereum. In fact, the Bitcoin and Ethereum rates in decentralized finance can be super, super freaking low sometimes. You're actually better off using a platform like BlockFi in many situations to be farming with, uh, to be earning a stable income, that passive income, on your Bitcoin or your Ethereum. There are exceptions and there are some platforms, of course, that can be good for it, but the stable coin rates tend to be really great, especially in decentralized finance. You can be earning some pretty amazing rates of return just for putting your dollars to work. That's your USDC stable coins, your USDT stable coins, your DAI stable coins. My personal preference of stable coins, USDC, USDT, the Tether company, They've just done too much shady stuff, in my opinion, to trust my wealth, any portion of it, really, sitting with those guys. Another great part, of course, about stablecoins, not just the great yield farming opportunities, but you can't buy the dip if you don't have any chips. That's why stablecoins are so great. You can be there earning these great yields with them, and then when the market corrections come, and they always do, you have money sitting on the sidelines, ready to enter the market at a moment's notice, which is a very, very valuable thing. Now, if you are starting off in crypto and you want a super easy, super simple way to earn a passive income, you got to check out BlockFi. It's one of the easiest ways to earn a passive income on your cryptocurrencies. You can get 5% on your Bitcoin, 4.5% on your Ethereum, and up to 9.3% on your stablecoins. And you can get an additional 2% on your stablecoins if you sign up for the BlockFi credit card, which is a Bitcoin back rewards card. Now, if you need to start a BlockFi account, use the link down below in the description and you can get up to a $250 Bitcoin bonus just for using that link, starting an account and making your first deposit. So go ahead and check that out if you want to get yourself some free Bitcoin and some passive income. Now on the topic of passive income, we also need to talk about staking. So we have a lot of different networks that are offering you staking opportunities. The reason why you want to lend out your Bitcoin on a platform like BlockFi is because you can't stake it, right? Bitcoin is not a proof of stake network. It is a proof of work network. So you have the assets, your, your digital gold, and if you want to make more of it, you have to lend it out or put it into yield farming. Whereas something like Polkadot or Cardano, you can just go and stake those coins and then in exchange for you staking those coins, supporting the network, you actually get a percentage of the rewards paid out into your wallet. Now, this can range from something like 5 or 6% for Cardano, 11 12% for Polkadot right now. And those rates change over time. But these are some pretty damn good rates. If you got in early on Cardano, for example, and you have a nice big stack of it, sitting there and it's earning you 5% a year, as an example, that can be some really, really good passive income. You could have bought a million Cardano for not that much uh, a year ago, 
And now that could be making you $50,000 a year in passive income or more than that, actually $75,000 a year in passive income, approximately depending on today's prices. This is pretty damn amazing. Now you can, of course, take that Cardano that you get and sell it for cash. But if you don't need the cash, you can take that Cardano that you get or the polka dot or whatever other staking coin you're doing and then stake those coins to get even more coins because remember, you're taking the long-term view. You're taking this as a long-term investor. So getting even more and more of those coins that you think are going to have a higher future value then becomes a very good value proposition for the long-term investor staking those coins. Next, let's talk about risk. The higher the risk, the lower your position size will likely want to be. This is a mistake that a lot of people make, a lot of new investors make. They think, well, I'm gonna go and put all my money on some low cap altcoin because it's going to be the coin that's going to do the next 5,000x move. Now, it might seem like a good idea at the time to take your entire investment portfolio. I mean, hey, everyone's getting rich. The market's pumping like crazy. Dog meme coins are making millionaires. So I'll just throw all my money in on one too. Well, that can be a very, very bad mistake for your portfolio and for your long-term wealth. Because the more speculative a coin, the more likely it is to drop dramatically. We see rug pulls happening all the time. We see networks getting uh, attacked, things getting hacked, all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Or just Bitcoin tanks because China, China, something, something. And your altcoin that you thought was going to give you 1,000x returns has just dropped by 90 freaking percent. The best way to mitigate your risk with these high-risk altcoins, just keep your position sizing low. So don't go 100% in. Don't even put 10% of your money into these high-risk altcoins. 1% of your entire portfolio, maybe 2% of your super bullish on it, as an example. Often, uh, for my new altcoin entries on some of these really uh, speculative coins, and I do dabble in speculative coins without a doubt. I talk about them here on the channel from time to time. It's 1% or less of my portfolio. Sometimes it's 0.5% of my total portfolio or even less than that. Now you may see, well, what's even the point, Lark? Why even mess around with that, right? Well, if it does a 10, 20, 50 X and it's 0.5% of my portfolio, that could be a substantial return. But if it goes to zero, I haven't actually lost that much either. Risk management. Risk management, this is what it's all about here, guys. This is about survival, staying in the game. Become tax efficient. That is the next thing on our list here. Lower your tax burden as much as legally possible. There is no reason to pay more taxes than you legally need to pay. So get to understand uh, your local tax scene with crypto. You may need to get an accountant for this. It, varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but if you're kind of sleeping on the whole, like, hey, what am I gonna do with my taxes? And when it comes to crypto, nah, you should really do something about that. For example, long-term gains versus short-term gains are taxed at different rates in most places. You should understand that. Do a first in, first out rule if you're selling some of your crypto, for example. These are things to think about. It's also really good, of course, to be a long-term investor in the market for this reason. You can also look at tax harvesting. So sometimes you're going to lose on positions. You're going to have to sell at a loss. But you know what? You can take that loss and use it to reduce your overall tax burden. So this is tax harvesting. And for the more adventurous of you, you can even change countries. There are countries that have 0% tax. You could go to Monaco or to Dubai or to Portugal. Some of those options might be easier for you than others, but it's all possible. So these are things to consider for a long-term investor. The next topic is to rebalance your portfolio. And of course, to take freaking profits at some point, man, you gotta pay yourself. What are you doing here otherwise? You probably came to make money and then you never click the sell button and you never make any freaking money. So if you have some altcoin that you invested, let's say 1% of your portfolio in, that, that altcoin's now gone up 30x. So it's now 30% of your entire portfolio consists of that damn altcoin. Take some freaking profits, man. Get some money off the table. Get your capital back out. 
Oh, it's just, it's, oh, it's so good. It just feels so good when you get your capital out of an investment and then you know, up or down, it's only about how much more money you're going to make. You're not losing any money. All that money you worked your butt off for at your nine to five job or whatever, you're not going to lose that money. You're just talking about more or less profits from that altcoin bag. But even then, if you have something that has gone up 30X, get your capital out, maybe get some Bitcoin, throw some money into some USDC, start, you know, farming or doing some lending over on BlockFi, right? Put this money to work to make you more money. Maybe that altcoin, even if it started at 1%, you never intended for it to become more than 5 to 10% of your portfolio. Cut it back, cut it back, cut it back. Put some money into Bitcoin, put some money into Ethereum, put some money into USDC. Take some money out. Go buy yourself something nice. Take, take your wife out for a nice dinner. Buy yourself a new shirt or something. I don't know. Don't be afraid to take profits in 2017, 2018. There were so many people who were like paper millionaires, right? They had millions of dollars worth of cryptocurrencies for a few days, a few weeks maybe. Never sold anything. Most of those coins trended down to almost zero. Some of them bounced back and went to new highs during this, this altcoin season. But that doesn't need to be you. Don't just be a paper millionaire. Click the sell button once in a while and make yourself a millionaire for real. That is how you consolidate profits. That is how you have you know, USDC on hand to buy the dips. That's how you build long-term positions in this market. This is something for you to keep in your mind, especially if you've been taking a, a hard hit on the markets recently. And I know a lot of you have. The good news is, is that this asset class is not going to disappear. Crypto is not going to go to zero. These are lessons that you can start applying now for your long-term investing portfolio, which brings me to my final freaking point. Zoom out. So many investors are stuck thinking about what's going to happen in an hour, what's going to happen tomorrow. They're constantly all stressed out about it. Try to zoom out a little bit. Most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a year or a month or a week or a day, right? I'm going to 100x this Bitcoin long and make a bajillion dollars. It doesn't work out like that. But on the flip side, most investors underestimate what they can accomplish in five years or 10 years. Think about that. If you could be investing now with a very, very high chance of success of being a millionaire or a multimillionaire in five years' time. Wouldn't you put in that work? Five years isn't that long. Put that work in. Have that goal. Get that discipline. Because if you're out there gambling on 100x leverage, throwing your entire weekly paycheck into dog mean coins, you're going to run into trouble. That's just the reality. But if you Look at some of the lessons that I talked about in this video today. This is how a lot of people have built a lot of wealth using cryptocurrencies. It's not a secret. It's not super tricky to do. You just have to be disciplined enough to follow through with it and continue to have that long-term view on the market. Anyway, those are my two Satoshis for today. Your question. Are you a long-term investor or are you here to get rich quick? And if you are a long-term investor, how's it been working out for you in this market? Have you been making profits consistently over the years? Have you been building up your wealth portfolio? And if you are a get rich quicker, how's that been working out for you too? I know there are exceptions. I know there are some people who do get rich quick. Have you actually cashed out and kept some of that money that you got rich quick with? Or have you been trying to get rich quick and basically just getting your butt handed to you time and time again? Curious to hear your stories down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.